chapter 28 talk about overcurrent protection devices. As I said, a few slides to go over. And um, in particular, fuses and circuit breakers. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the fuses. Before we start, anybody knows the difference between fully rated panel and series rated panels? Raise your hand. Anybody knows the difference between fully rated panel and series rated panel? How about if I told you the difference is 50% more expensive fully rated panel than uh, than a series rated panel? Would would that make a big difference when you when you estimate? Big difference. So it's not just a name. The same panel. See that panel right on the wall? If it's series rated panel, say it's hundred dollars. If it's fully rated panel, it becomes almost 150. So would that make a big difference if that was a a panel that's a thousand a thousand dollar from a thousand you jump into a fifteen hundred? So that's what this chapter is going to talk about: series rated panels and fully rated panels. That's a big concept. Over current protection coordination is a big deal, guys. Let's talk about over current protection coordination. Brian, when I was doing your working for Excel, when I worked for uh, Associated Consultants Engineers, we did distribution transmission lines. We use the software to analyze the whole grid. Your house and my house are shown as one block of power on the grid, and they analyze the voltage drop that coming on the distribution lines, the short circuit availability, the size of the conductor, so they can go upgrade these conductors. That's the utility side. Us, the engineers, we do the same thing on the power system inside the building. So we do a short circuit Dunwoody. We have a 3,000 amp switch gear sitting down in the basement. Distribute the power all over to all these panels. So we do a short circuit analysis on it. It decides and load flow decides the size of the conductors that we can use, the voltage drop on every panel. And if you are to work on this panel, Darren, as a German electrician, and there is a short circuit with this panel exploding in your face, arc flash, arc flash analysis. All this is related to, to over competition device. So um, if you guys, uh, so we're going to talk about overcurrent protection only. When you when you talk, Kerry, if you have the luxury one day, and work on power like uh, you probably, if you get involved with the engineers that work on on the distribution line, the high voltage, there are more than overcurrent protection for the power system. There is something they call it, guys, and we wouldn't touch on that one unless you go work for utilities. There's over under voltage protection, over under frequency protection, directional over current protection. There's close to a hundred things that you need to take into consideration when you to protect the power system and operating power system. We mostly in the code and in the low voltage system, 600 volt or less, for the most part, we focus on over current protection. That's it. Fuses and circuit breakers. But be aware that there is under over frequency if you have generators. You have to have over under frequency for them. The frequency dip below a certain value, you can burn equipment. You have to trip or adjust the frequency. The voltage dip below a certain value, you have to disconnect the load or adjust the frequency. That's what Excel and all those guys um, go through. Okay. For uh, the rest of us, my friend, we will be, as I said, talking about the overcome fiction device, talk about the NDC code, what re code requirement for the two protections that we have when it comes to overcurrent protection device. Now, Ellen, from now on, until you graduate from Nunwoody, when you see Chad uh, write OCPD, you're going to see all my tests will have OCPD. That's overcurrent protection device. That means two things, one or two things. Number one, that means a circuit breaker, or it means a fuse. Can I just get you to, every time you have an overcurrent protection device, means two things, for the most part. Uh, fuse or circuit breaker, so be aware of that. When, ha when you have an electrical power circuit, it has five conditions. You guys are familiar with the conditions of a circuit. Either the circuit is normal, it, it works as it's scheduled, right? Turn it on. Or it's shorted, or it has a ground fold, or it has an open circuit. So these are the, the condition of circuits. They call them five conditions of the circuit. You look at them. I know you know them for even four. Um, types. Or an operation of fuses and circuit breakers, uh, current limiting fuses versus non-current limiting fuses. We'll talk a few uh, about these. And I promise you, my friend Andrew, we will continue to talk about these. That will take you guys, I always tell the students when they're here, that will take you to the different level. Uh, from being a drafter, just drawing a couple of symbols like Chad and flipping it in a day, into being an actual designer. You specify these equipments. You, don't, you fully understand it. You do arc flash analysis. You do short circuit for these systems. That's why you're here. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We understand that. So you people will hire you not because you can draft a couple of uh, 
uh, receptacles on a circuit. I can give it to an architectural guy right now and he will do a better job than you, Jeff. Guarantee you. Because that's what they do. They build buildings. They hire us because when we put a symbol of a receptacle, we fully understand what their symbol is. And when we put 10 receptacles on a circuit, we know why we put 10 receptacles on a circuit, not 100 receptacles on a circuit. Somebody from the architects has no clue. When we draw a box and we call, we call this box uh, a panel, we know what a panel is. We know how to size a panel, and we know how to go specify a panel, and we know how to, to, to purchase a panel. Cool? So these are the things that you guys are in, in for. So moving on into, in, um, I brought with me a couple of circuit breakers, guys. You can have circuit breakers that can come in. You're familiar with single pole. Single pole, this is a two pole circuit breaker, two pole circuit breaker. And when we go to the commercial, you're going to have a three pole circuit breaker, a full spiel three pole circuit breaker. A pole is for the most part, part a phase, a connection. So that you're looking at a three pole circuit breaker, meaning you can flip, you can disconnect three things. These three things could be three phase or two phase and neutral. Three things. Every time you hear a pole, it's a thing that you need to disconnect. Can I have a thumbs up? 99% of the time, guys, when they say a pole, they need a phase. So three pole means three phase. But it doesn't have to be. It could be two phase and neutral. I'm disconnected. So here's a two pole circuit breaker. Can I use this one to disconnect three phase system? No, because it's not a three pole. So there's some re regulations. You have a single pole and residential. You are stuck with these two. Single pole. You guys are familiar with the single pole? Just one hot and two pole. Um, so we'll talk about this one. Interrupting rating. Interrupting rating. Each circuit breaker does have an interrupting rating. The interrupting rating of a circuit breaker, meaning the highest amount of energy, aka current and voltage, that this circuit breaker can interrupt before a big ball of fire comes out of it and burn you. Does that make sense? When we size them, that guys, we size them to have each circuit breaker have an, a rating. After this rating, the circuit breaker will tell you, I no longer can handle this situation. What do you do? Go to a bigger, more robust circuit breaker that can handle it. Just to give you an idea, when we invite uh, Kotler Hammer guys, we have Kotler Hammer rep comes here next quarter, and, and he brings circuit breaker with them, and he'll show you if this happened to be, say, a 50 amp circuit breaker, and the interrupted rating of this one is 35, it would be equivalent to this size. If the same 50 amp circuit breaker, if the interrupting is 65,000 amp, it would be that size. So the same, the same 50 amp circuit breaker can be that size or that size, depending upon how robust the circuit breaker and the capability of the circuit breaker to interrupt the short circuit. It will make a lot of sense when we go through the situation. Available short circuit formula for calculation. I promise you, my friends, you're going to hear a lot about these one when we go to the commercial because we do it once. We do it by hand how to calculate the short circuit in a, in, in, a, in a power circuit. And we also have a software that does that for us. So these are a few things that we would like to, to touch on, guys. Um, series rated. We talked about the series rated panels. If you're not familiar with this term, get used to it. And fully rated panels. There's series rated and fully rated panels. Uh, selective coordination. There is a term that's called selective coordination. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard about it right now. A non-selective coordination. We're going to touch about that one. As a matter of fact, Adam, my friend, you will be doing coordinating for me in two projects. In the next two projects, you're going to be doing coordination for the commercial building and coordination for the, um, for the uh, industrial building. So these are the terms I'm going to be talking about, guys. Um, NEC code book article that talks about 240 is the article that talks about um, uh, overcome protection device in NEC code book. Anything you want about overcome protection device, you're going to find it in NEC code book in 240. Notoriously famous things. Um, so these, the bottom line, guys, here's what the bottom line. If you have a service or a branch circuit or a feeder, now, Aaron, you graduate from Dunwoody. And if you don't know these three very important circuits in the power system, ask your friend Chad for a refund. We talked about service yesterday. That's bringing the power to the service, the switch gear. That's called the service conductors. We talked about branch circuit. That's from the circuit breaker 15 amp into the light or from a 100 amp circuit breaker into the air handling unit. That's branch circuit. And the theater between two panels, the cables between two panels. All these by code have to be protected but to protect it by an overcurrent protection device. You have to put a fuse or a circuit breaker ahead of every every feeder, branch circuit, and and service. 
with some exception for the tabs. So that's what this is telling you. I have an, I, I, here's my cable here. I can't tie my cable to the load here directly, and here's my source of power. So I have 120 source of power here. Um, I cannot tie, here's my source of power. I can't just go like this. I can't do that. I have to put an overcurrent protection device. So if this is a brand circuit, it could be a feeder or a surf. So you have to have an overcurrent protection device, feeds or circuit breaker. Can I have thumbs up, chat? That's what the code tells you. And it has to be sized by the, here's how do you size this? And there's a few rules for sizing it, guys, for the, but the general rule, when you size it, it has to match the rating of the conductors. Remember that you can't make the, like number 14 conductor, I can't protect it for, generally speaking, with some exceptions. I can't protect it for more than 12. Why? Because number 14 cannot deliver more than, uh, number 14 cannot deliver more than 15 amps by code. So there's limitations. So this conductor, say, if it was a 15 amp, then this has to be number 12, and a minimum number 14. And the load here, if it's non-continuous, cannot be more than 15 amp. That's exactly what this is telling you. You have to match the load and match the conductor. So I have a 15 amp circuit breaker that's actually uh, uh, protecting a 14 amp circuit uh, conductor that's feeding a 15 amp load. That's the general rule. Does that make sense? The general rule. There's some exceptions, but that's the general rule. The overcome fiction device cannot be more than what the conductor can handle and cannot be more than the more than the, the load that you're connected to, to it. That's if it's non-continuous load. If it's continuous load, they change it slightly. Here's how they change it slightly. If it's continuous load you're pulling out of these, they limit the load here to 80%. Very important. So the load on this circuit breaker, if it's continuous, we have to limit this one just to 80%. 80% to 15 is what? 12? Thank you. So that load cannot be more than 12 amps. If it's continuous load. The conductor is still the same. But the load, see how we limit the load down to 12? If it's continuous load, which is 99% of the time when you go commercial industrial. Cool. So that's what you need to understand. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We have fully understand our computation device, protect the conductor and the equipment load. Cool. And that's how that formula is. This guy cannot be more than the conductor can handle and cannot be more than the load um, can handle too. Or I can't pull more load than what the circuit breaker can, can provide you. Otherwise, it's going to trip. Okay. So that's, um, there's a couple of rules, guys, in the NEC code book about circuit breakers. I'm going to highlight a few of them as we go. The notoriously, um, uh, notoriously famous, do you guys see any 240.6 here? Let's see here, 240.6. Uh, 240.6, anybody remember that from all the math that we did? 240.6 give you all the adjustable circuit breakers, the non-adjustable circuit breaker sizes. Starting from 15 amps, you go there, 15 amp circuit breakers, all the way to 6,000 amps. These are the available circuit breaker sizes that we do in the U.S., non-adjustable. Now, you're going to hear me, um, Andrew, my friend, later on talk about adjustable circuit breakers. The limit on the adjustable circuit breakers, which typically start making sense when you go 600 amps or higher. If your system is not 600 amps or higher, you're, talk, you're most likely you're looking at fixed circuit breaker like these, non-adjustable. You can't adjust it. The adjustable ones, you can tweak a 1,000 amp and make it 800, or make it 750, or make it uh, uh, 533. Well, I'm exaggerating here. 550. Tweak them down, right? So these, the limit, the number of circuit breaker you can do adjustable, it's unlimited, because you can adjust them based on the manufacturers. The non-adjustable ones, the fixed ones, they go from 15 all the way to 6,000, and in between 15, 20, you guys remember 25, 30, and so forth. Um, a couple of things about circuit breakers, guys, and as well as fuses, you have to um, you have to understand. So we have the listed standard amp circuit breakers. Um, the overcap detection device have to be connected to the hot conductor only. If you connect it to the neutral conductor, you have to tie the hot and the neutral together. Can I bring can I bring the two hots and a neutral to a three pole circuit breaker like this? Yes, why? Because you, when you disconnect the neutral, you'll disconnect the two hots with it. Can I bring 
So can I bring the hot and the neutral to a circuit breaker like this? And disconnect the hot and the neutral for a 120 circuit? Yes, because you could disconnect them together. But typically, we only break what? The hot. So these guys will be tied to the hot. Um, or these fuses will be only on the hots and the phases. So just keep this in mind. Over cam protection devices cannot be installed in bathrooms. Everybody knows that, right? You can't put a panel in the bathroom by code. If the circuit breakers guys are in the service, they have to be rated, means they have to be bolted on, screwed on and bolted onto the panel if it's only in the service. If it's not a service, it could be plugged in like these. You've seen the ones that you plug them in like this, you plug them in. These are not rated for service. Service entrance disconnect have to be bolted on. There's a, there's a bolt here that you tie it to the panel, to the frame. So I can't unplug it unless I use a tool. That's very important for this, for, for service entrance equipment. Uh, Overcam protection device shall be accessible. You have to put them in a place where people can have access to them. So these are all directly from the code that I'm looking at. Uh, you can put them in a place where, they, where it can ignite the surrounding. It makes sense. The arc, if there's a short circuit, you put them in an area where there's gas. What do you think? Hazardous location, you blow up the place. So these are all from the code, guys. Um, shall not be located over steps or stairway. I can't put a panel over the steps or the stairway. The landing, no problem. The steps right here, you can't put a panel. That's all from the code. Um, so there's a few rules. Minimum circuit breaker for an apartment building is what? Service. We talked about this yesterday. 100 amps. How about non-dwelling? Minimum circuit breaker for non-dwelling. 60 amps. These are all from Article 230. Um, so these are all these, the, the, you guys are looking at them, the Article code. Uh, circuit breaker have to be avail have to have an available short circuit on them. So is it going to be able to interrupt 100 amp, 100,000 amp, or um, 35,000 amp or so forth, that's called the interrupting rating of the circuit breaker, the interrupting rating. So they have to have interrupting rating. When you have a circuit breaker, guys, it has, it has to have the voltage in it. Is it the voltage? Is it, first, is it single phase or three phase? Number one. Number two, how many poles? Is it one pole, two pole, or three pole? Number three, the voltage, the maximum voltage. Is it 600 amp or 300 amp? The, uh, 600 volt or 300 volt that you can put on this, right? So if it's 600 volt, you can put all the voltage. Can I, so see if I have a 600 volt circuit breaker, guys, can I tie a two-way system to it? No problem, because it fits it, right? 600 volt is the maximum voltage. So they have a voltage, and they have also an interrupting rating that you have attached to interrupting rating. If the interrupting rating, um, so you have to have an interrupting like this one says 10,000, if you read through it, it says 10,000 amp, meaning if there's a short circuit up to 10,000 amp, this should not blow up. It should trip and handle it. Might arc, you know, but it's not going to blow up the circuit breaker. It's going to handle it. If you put, it's rated for 10, you put 15,000 amp into a short circuit, this one turns into a bomb, will explode. And that has nothing to do yet with the arc mesh. It will arc. If you have arc, it will arc. You still have to have protection for arc. But if you if you exceed that, it will not only arc, but the arc will be fatal. It will be it will like a bomb, basically. Okay? So these are all the requirements, guys, that you can see um, about the, any, the, the conductors. Let's talk about the five conditions, the five conditions of circuit. For this one, I like to go directly into... My um, my um, five conditions, easy to see them here. Here's the five conditions of circuit. Very easy, very simple. Take this, very simple, very easy. Um, condition number one, it's called the normal, normal condition. I have a 240 system. Oops. I have a 240 system that you guys can see, 240 system, two fuses. I have a 24 ohm. You guys know this from the days of the Mr. Ryman, right? You, this is series circuit, so I have... Um, I have an impedance of the conductor, very small, the impedance of the load, and the impedance of the source. These, these could be neglected. This really could be neglected, very, very tiny. So if you, if you take the voltage divided by all these impedances, you get the amount of amps, which is basically 9.98. Long story short, guys, really, in all reality, this will equal, you find the current equal uh, 240 divided by 24 and equal 10 amps. That's in reality. Is this is normal? Can I pull 10 amps out of 15 amp circuit breaker? Continuous and non-continuous? Yeah. 
So that's basically what they call it, the normal condition of a circuit. It's up and running, it's working. We're not overloading, we're not short circuiting, we're not open circuit. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand. I want to bring to your attention this junk here that they added for the feeders. These are the impedance of the feeders. Why do we have two here? Because there's two conductors, right? And why do we have this little one here? Um, we have two, uh, 0.15 and 0.05. These were the conductors. I don't know if you guys can see it right here. This is for this and this. So ne they're negligible. The reason why we put them here because you're gonna see how they play a big role in the short circuit. Thumbs up for, orbit, for normal condition. Okay, that's exactly what you guys want your circuit to do. Okay, let's go to the next condition. The next condition, what they call is overload. Now, my friend, who's my friend this time? My friend, um, Jamie, he went and his wife said, well, we want another heater in the basement. A 24 volt, 24 amp, uh, ohm is a heater. So in the basement, Jamie's wife wants another heater, another corner in the basement. So he went and added another heater. So now I have two loads, okay? In the ohms, if they're these two in parallel, do you guys remember the days of Ryman? And you guys did the parallel, two, two loads in parallel, you find the impedance, basically half of the impedance. You put two loads in parallel, you cut the impedance by half. That's the rule, you have to understand it. Brian, working for Excel Energy, that's a big concept. When the more load you add to the system, the less the impedance of the system will be for the most part. So look at that. Everybody knows how to, these are two loads in parallel. You multiply them, divide them by their sum. So the, the, the ohm for the two together becomes 24. Okay, now do the math. You take the 24, 240, oops, take your 240, um, like we did, 240 divided by, instead of 12 now, there's a current that's going right through it. Uh, 12, that will give you what? 20 amps. Can you guys see that? Now I got 20 amps. Now the fuses are rated for what? 15. This is what they call the overload condition. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Do you see just you went 15%, 50% to 100% more than the load can, that the fuses. That, so a load, an overload condition guys, is probably 50 to 100% more than the circuit breaker can handle. If your circuit breaker is 100 amp, um, and you, you put 25% uh, extra on it, you overloaded it. 50% extra, you overloaded it. 200% extra, you overloaded it. Not a short circuit, overload. Like I said, Jamie's wife wants another heater in the basement. He plug it into the same circuit, right? Any question guys about the overload condition? Now, what happened to the, to the fuse here? The fuse will trip, but not in, will, will blow, not instantly though. It might sit there for 10 minutes, on an overload condition and the fuse will blow. It wouldn't trip instantly. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Because in an overload condition, they don't trip instantly. They sit there and heat up and heat up and heat up. And there's a resistor inside this fuse, guys. It keeps heating, 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 heating up within probably five to 10 minutes, minutes. It will burn that resist, that, that wire inside the fuse and open the fuse. This is what they call the overload condition, condition two. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, for condition two? We fully understand it. I am, if you can see, I'm neglecting these because they are negligible. The answer here is 19.94, but because you're adding the resistor of the, of the other circuit, it's neglected, you neglect, almost neglected. Cool? Thumbs up? All right, let's go to the second condition, uh, third condition. Third condition is called short circuit. Now look at the short circuit condition here. Now, the short circuit condition, now, uh, we, can we pick on you, Jeremy? Jeremy, my friend, went in the circuit right around the, right around the heater, and he, he bypassed the heater. So you can see what he did right in here. He, brought, he basically brought phase A and phase B and put them together with a wire nut. <laughs> That's, we are in a short circuit condition. We brought hot, can you guys see here's hot one, here's my hot one, here's my hot two, and we bypass the circuit. So, uh, Andrew, my friend, do you think now the current that's coming in here, do you think it's easier for the current to go through his heater and heat, burn a neck heat, or go through that nice wire, so it's like this is going through the, my alley, right, and this is going through Interstate uh, 35. So you think the cars are gonna go, uh, and we're going at 100 miles an hour. So where do you think the current, when it's going at 100 miles an hour, it's gonna go through the alley here? Of course, 
legally. You know, they can't go through the alley, but legally going to go through the alley or through the interstate? Through the interstate. So, yeah, there will be a tiny little bit that going through the alley, tiny little bit, negligible. But most of the current is going to go where? Through around there, because <laughs> it's an easy path. Easy path, interstate for the current. Okay, so this is what happens. When you, when you, so this is how you do this. Now you have a resistor of zero in parallel with that. When you take, so almost this over here becomes the, the whole, the total resistor is zero. Because you take zero in parallel with 24, right? And you do the math on them, it ends up, it's, there's no load at all. This is where your load is, right? This is my load. No load. I pay pass the load. Cool? Everybody's okay with me? So look what happened here. Now what happened to the 24 and now in this formula, there's no load. The 12 and the 24 are gone. The only load that you have is the resistance of the wires. So I have two resistance. These are the resistance of the wire, and this is the resistance of the source. They call it the impedance of the circuit. That's it. The load is gone. Now do the math. Take the 24 divided by these two, add them up. That's easy. What do you get? Look what you got. 7,700 amps. 7,700 amps. Can you guys see that? This is 77, uh, 4, 2 amps. And what's the fuse is rated for? 15 amps. This is what we call it short circuit condition. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Okay. Now, for short circuit condition, this fuse is rated, this, uh, this fuse is rated, let's just say 10,000 amps. Now, you will see the rating, the interrupting rating of the fuse right on the fuse itself. So this fuse is rated for 10,000 amps. I want somebody to tell me, would this fuse blow up and kill somebody if it's rated for 10,000 amps, if it sees a 7,700 amps uh, short circuit? No. Why? Because it's rated for it. Can you guys see the difference now? Now the short circuit will be handled by this. The 15 amp the is meaningless when, it, when you have a short circuit. The term 15 amp is meaningless here. What's going to handle it is the short circuit rating. Short uh, circuit rating. That's the short circuit interrupting rating of this fuse. If it says 10 kilo, 10 kilo amps, we're safe. It will interrupt the short circuit. Take this, Aaron, my friend. If that was 5,000 amps, 5,000 amp rating, this fuse is fine. And we are pulling 7.7 .7 right through it. What's going to happen to this? Explode. Explode. It will, it will, it has to interrupt, but it will explode, violently explode. Yep. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We, we fully understand what a short circuit is. Fully understand this condition, what short circuit is. Okay, the last one, or the one before the last, is a ground fault. Now, ground fault condition, typically like a short circuit, except you have, uh, now, a ground, uh, ground fault condition, guys, um, you take a hot and a, and, a, and a ground. So let me just draw. Uh, here's an equipment here. Here's my circuit breaker coming to it. And here's my neutral, just simple. And here's my 20 amp. And uh, here's the frame of the equipment. Here's my equipment grounding conductor. This is ground. This is neutral. This is hot one. Cool. Are you, this is typical circuit. Now what happens if the ground fault is if the hot somehow touch the neutral or the hot somehow touch the ground, right? Hot to ground or hot to neutral, that's called a ground fault. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Ground faults typically are smaller than short circuit, but they could be higher under certain circumstances for three phase. It could be even higher. So that's why when we when we rate the equipment, um, um, who am I going to pick on today? Uh, Darren, when we rate the equipment, when we say 10,000 amps, we rate the equipment based on the three phase. So if it can handle the three phase, then it can handle the, the ground fault. If it can handle the short circuit, then it can handle the ground fault. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? The short circuit is the worst scenario that you're going to encounter. Ground fault typically lower. A ground fault typically lower. And the reason why lower, because the impedance when you go through the pipe, so if I take a hot and tie it to the pipe here, the impedance of the pipe is very hot versus the impedance of a copper wire. Can you guys see the difference? Why? Why the ground fault is lower? Because when the current is going to go back, it's going to go in the pipe. In the pipe impedance, the EMP pipe is the impedance is higher, which makes the current lower. Uh, but if it goes face to face or hot to hot, 
the impedance of the wire, the copper wire, is smaller, so they can go down. Okay, so back to my example before, guys. If the short circuit was 77, ground fault typically will be, typically, typically, for the most part, will be half of that. So 77, what's half of 77? Three and a half, uh, three, four, let's just say, for the most part, 4,000 amp, give or take. So coming from a 77, 7.7 kilo amp. So if this is a, if this is your uh, um, short circuit, short circuit, and then, and this is it will be your ground fault. Typically, again, things could change in three phase, and it could be even higher than this. Disclaimer. Um, okay, can I have thumbs up, guys? So if we can handle 7.7 .7 kilo amp, do you think we can't handle 4 kilo amps? Of course we do. When it comes to the short circuit, the term that they use is K, kilo. You don't say a 10,000 amp. That's only the naive new in the industry that say 10,000 amps, right? The term that they use is 10 kilo amp when it comes to the short circuit. When it comes to the rating of the circuit breakers, we can see 1,000 amp. Oh, that's a rating of circuit breakers. I can see 100 amp. 100 amp is the rating of the circuit breakers. How much continuously, well, how much you can pull out of the, uh, out of this circuit breaker in normal condition. Any question, guys, about the ground fault condition for the circuit? Very, very important. Cool? All right, so let's go to the last one. The last, um, oops. There you go. The last condition, oh, it went too far. Okay, open circuit. Here's the last condition. The last condition is, is uh, basically of a circuit is an open circuit, right? So you you went to the hot, can you guys see the hot here? And you just brought a, a plier and chopped that, that wire to open the circuit. <laughs> So we're dead, right? Nothing. Is there any current going on here? No. No current is going on. So what happens if, if, if you bring Chad, comes over here, puts one hand here and the other hand here. Can you guys see what happened? Well, it's actually better than, this is better than putting one hand here and one hand here. Right? Because if you put hand to hand, you're you're like a load. Here you are in series with the load. So depending on when you are, the impedance, you will get shock and you could get killed by grabbing on the both ends of the hot. But the nice thing is the load will limit the amount of current that going. The only thing that's going to go through you now. Remember that as this one was was it 10 amp? Because of your impedance, you might have. Uh, the, the, the stuff that goes through you might be five amps, but that, that's enough to get you to the second life. Join the load. So that's also dangerous, right? Isn't that dangerous? Open circuit. When you go to an open circuit, it's very dangerous. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know these five stages of, of circuit. So that's basically what the five stages of circuit. Um, so we talked about these one, my friends. Uh, open condition, all this stuff. Okay, now moving on to the fuses. The NEC code book guys talk about the fuse rating. Fuse rating there, the, most of the fuse that you're going to be dealing with guys um, in a real life are fuses like these. These are 600 volt rated fuses. That's what we use in the industry. Typically in residential, we don't use a whole lot of fuses. Um, these are three phase or single phase a fuse is 600 volt. This guy happened to be a 500 amp, 600 volt AC. It's a current limiting fuse, RKF fuse, current limiting. We'll talk about current limiting. And it can interrupt up to 200,000 amp, 200 kilo amp. That's as high, almost as high as you can get. Compared to this guy, this can only interrupt 10,000 amps, 10 kilo amps. 200 kilo amps. Can you guys see the difference? So, and they can come lower, typically 200 is the highest they can get. So that's basically, so your fuses can come up with voltage limitation. There's a smaller fuses, guys. They rate them, these plug-in fuses up to 120 volt, single phase plug-in fuses. Um, they're, they're working, they're, they're used in a system to ground up to 150 volts. So 
up to 150 volts, that will give you two AF, right? System like this will give you two AF slash 120 volt, right? And 240 slash 120. So these fuses, these plug-in fuses, do we have a few of them here? If you guys use them in our labs, um, the plug-in fuses, these are rated for a system like this. You can't put them in a 240 and 480, 277 systems. Now we're, we're flipping into what? These big boys. Okay, they have limitation on the amps, so you can get them from up to 30 amps. Again, I don't have these. The heck are they? they have, you've seen what, the screw-in fuses. We don't use them a whole lot. As engineers, they have their application. As I said, when we talk fuses in, in the commercial industry, here's the fuse, the type of fuse that we'll talk about. Or here's the type of the fuse that we'll talk about for motors and teeters and so forth. Cool? So these are smaller ones. Um, this type, which is the plug fuse, they call them the code, call them plug fuse. They have to have, by code, they have to have something called type S fuses. <laughs> They're just tired of us, guys. Because you can overfuse a conductor, they don't want you on a 15 amp circuit break, on a 15 amp um, rated conductor like number 14 to go put a 30 amp fuse. <laughs> so they have an S adapter where it limits you. Here's the limitation. For example, um, if you're um, if the base, the S base can limit you up to zero to 15. So you can put up to 15 zero, well one amp all the way to 15 amps in one S. So if you put number 14 tied to this uh, fuse, you're good, right? Because it covers you up to 15. Now you move to the second one, it takes you, um, so zero to 15, and the second one takes you from 16 to 20. So basically, they give you 15 amp rating, 20 amp rating, and 30 amp rating in these fuses. So if you want, the base will be ready for 15, up to 15. You can't put 20 in it because of the S type fuse. Um, so if you want a 20, you have to go to a different base. Long story short, I hate, I hate to spend time on it because we really not a whole lot we use it as designers. They don't want you to put a 20 amp fuse in a base that accepts uh, 15 amps. So what happened? Then you put a 20 amp on number 14 and you could burn that conductor. Any question guys how they, how they rate them? And then they go from 21 all the way to 30. So there will be three ratings of the fuses. Take one, take you up to 15. Higher than 15, you're stuck with 20. Higher than 20, you're stuck with the 30. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand. So if I have a base, so suppose I have a base, and this base actually um, uh, 15 amp, then I can put a fuse here inside it, six amps, no problem, right? Or 10 amps, or 15 amps, but I shall not, I cannot physically, mechanically put a 20 amps here, can I? Because it wouldn't fit. How many of you guys put a penny? Anybody have put a penny behind the fuse when it blows up? You've done that? No. Oh my God. You know how many people can do that? If the, if the fuse keeps blowing in the old days, we don't, we don't, I don't, we don't put fuses in dwellings anymore. Everything has changed to circuit breakers now. But the old days, 60 amp fuse panels, a fuse keeps blowing up and the owner does not have a replacement in the middle of the night or the weekend and doesn't want to go to Home Depot. So they'll take a penny, stick it right behind inside and screw the fuse right behind the penny. Basically, you bypass the fuse. You, it's like putting a big cover right behind it. And then if you do that, then you basically, they have no protection. That conductor can burn, a smoke can comes out of it. And after an hour, after the fire department pulls in, um, the circuit breaker, the main fuse will trip. That's after the fire has engulfed uh, <laughs> half of the house. Yeah, the guy that um, refinished all my my uh, floors in my house, they uh, did a panel swap or swap off for him from the S type. And when I went in there the first time, he had all the 50 amp circuits were fused to 30 amps. Yep. Because they had just replaced them all with 30. And still number 14 on them. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a fuse rated for 30 amps, and the conductor can handle only 15 amps uh, for number 14. So you could, that conductor could burn before the fuse wakes up. Oh yeah, the wires were all crispy, the insulation was all brittle because they had been heating up so bad. Yeah. So that's why we, we are moving into the circuit breakers. Great. So that's basically the smaller uh, type plug-in. 
Now we move into um, if uses under different, uh, so time current, current, okay. Well, another thing that we have guys is something called time current curve. I promise you guys, you will hear a lot about this. This looks like this. If a fuse or circuit, if a fuse or circuit breaker has a curve, a circuit breaker curve will look something like this. That's something similar. That's a circuit breaker. This component will be overload. This component will, will be um, ground fault. This component will be, for the most part, short circuit. Long story short, the higher the amp, the faster the circuit breaker will trip. This is called the time. Here is the time, and here is the current. The current R. So the higher you can see, um, so the time, the circuit breakers, so the time, the higher, or am I doing it? No, I'm doing it the opposite way. This should be the current, I'm sorry. This is the I, and this is the time. The higher the current, the faster it trips. This is time in seconds. So I'm not going to go there because I will promise you, you will hear a lot about these, but remember, every fuse or circuit breaker by manufacturer has a current curve, uh, time current characteristic curve by the manufacturer. We plug them into a software and we do coordination based on these. Just all what you have to remember right now. Uh, fuses guys come with time delay fuses because remember the time delay fuses delay on them and dual element time delay fuses. Dual element time delay fuses, single element, oh, I'm sorry, this is the non-time delay fuse. Okay, here's the, the difference. Non-time delay fuses, it sees the short circuit guys immediately in the traps. Time delay fuses, it, it, when it sees the short circuit, it waits, 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 then trips. Does that make sense? Dual element means there's one component handle the overload and one component handle the short circuit. And another time this load is named time delay fuses. So these are the, the most common ones you're going to have, non-time delay fuses and time delay fuses for fuses. And we'll talk about these when it comes to the coordination guys a lot. Um, dual element time are the cartridge. These are what they call them, the cartridge guys. This, now moving away from these plug in, the next standard when you need anything higher than, uh, for the most part, anything higher than 30 amps or 60 amps, you are looking, anything higher than 60 amps, you're looking at something similar to this, cartridge fuses. These guys can go up to 600 volts or 250, 600 volts. They can, you can get them up to 6,000 volts, 6,000 amps. So can I just get you to understand these are what you what you're basically looking at if you're going into um, into a major equipment. Um, there are different classes. We'll talk about the classes, guys, as we as we go. This one happened to be a current limiting fuse for uh, um, it says R um, RK5. Why it's important to know RK5 because later on when you guys do coordination with Chad. Uh, that will be around uh, November when we do coordination. Every time you see this manufacturer here, and every time you see an, an standard RK5, you can understand this is a current limiting fuse, current limiting fuse by design. So I don't want to overwhelm you with these, but be aware that the fuses have names and the names have a lot of meanings, a lot of meanings. Okay, any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments about these? Any questions? So as I said, most likely, uh, when they say a fuse switch gear, Darren, you have a, a thousand amp fuse switch gear. That's what you're looking at. That's what you're looking at. Um, that niche over here indicate this fuse is anybody knows current limit fuse. If it's not a current limit fuse, it will it will be both sides will be like this. And current limit fuse, we didn't talk about current limit fuse. I'm just going to mention one thing about current limit fuse. Here's what current limit fuse guys does. Here's my fuse. Uh, I have, uh, let's just say, a 32,000 amp short circuit here. This is the 100 amp, and the erupting is 45 kilo amp. I bought a fuse 100 amp with an interrupting 45 kilo amp. A short circuit right here is 32 kilo amp. Would this blow? First of all, would this blow? If the short circuit here is 32, and also the short circuit here. Okay, so the short circuit is here, it's 32. I have a piece of equipment that I bought from China, and this piece of equipment is rated for, look at that, 
this is weighted for 10 kilo amps. The equipment and the short 10 kilo amps. Now, what happens if 10 kilo amps weighted equipment would stand tied to a C the 32? What's going to happen to this big milking machine, milk processing machine? Blow up. Can't handle it. It's weighted 14K. So that's when we have a current limit fuse going. So when the current goes right through the fuse, guess what the current limit fuse does? Knock it down. Open it so fast that it knocks it down by design. See, I'm going to design it to knock it down since my equipment is 10K. I'm going to knock it down to 9K, 9 kilo amps. So I would put a current limit fuse that takes this amount and knocks this amount down to 9 kilo amps. So this machine will only see 9 kilo amps and it's rated for what? 10 kilo amps. Would it blow up? No. That's what the current limit fuse. And I will leave it at this because we're going to be coming to it later on in, in the commercial. So that's basically what, um, what, what you saw. Breakers, guys, most of this, you're looking right here at um, a magnetic, um, you know what, let me give you a five minutes break. How about that? Let's get a five minutes break because I want your attention for that one. Resume here. Jeff will join us in, in less than a second here. Um, okay, now circuit breakers. This is typically what we do in, in willing circuit breakers, 100 amp or 200 amp. You can pass these, William, or Brian. Um, so these are the circuit breakers they're going to have, guys. We have single pole, three pole, all this good stuff. We talked about the requirements for circuit breakers, exactly like fuses. You can't put them in a bathroom. You can't put them on a stairway. Um, they have to be accessible. 99% of uh, is willing, 99.9% .9 of the willing, it's called thermomagnetic circuit breaker. Thermomagnetic circuit breakers, um, Adam has two components. One component is thermal and the other component is magnetic. So these are the two components, one component thermal, one component magnetic. This is where the term magnetic comes to be and the term thermal comes to be. Who cares? Who cares? If you have a thermomagnetic circuit breaker, guys, and you have an overload condition like we looked at, at the, at the overload condition, the, the thermal part will start to heat up, heat up until physically, mechanically, two dissimilar material will disengage and interrupt the circuit. That's the thermal part. The short circuit part, which is the magnetic, you, if the current so, goes so high, it will create a magnetic field that literally, physically, mechanically pull contacts apart and open the circuit breaker. That's based on the mechanism of working. And I promise you, my friends, when our friends at Cutler Hammer comes here and they talk about these, they'll go through all the mechanism of how they work when we go to the commercial industrial. Uh, do me a favor. Circuit breakers are rated for 80% of their rating. Take this. I have 100 amp. I have 100 amp circuit breaker. I have 100 amp circuit breaker. For a 100 amp circuit breaker, how much current continuously can I pull out of a 100 amp circuit breaker? 80, 80 amps. 80 amps. Can I get you guys to understand that if you have a 100 amp, yeah, the circuit breaker, just take the circuit breaker back. Thank you. Um, if, if you guys have a, if you have a 100 amp circuit breaker, I cannot load this 100 amp circuit breaker more than 80%. Everybody is, is cool with that? Now, um, Jeff, when you have a 1,000 amp switch gear, when you see open a 1,000 amp switch gear, unless the switch gear says, the circuit breaker says 100% weighted, 100% weighted circuit breaker, you cannot pull my continuously pull more than 800 amp out of this uh, switch gear. Can I have thumbs up chat for that? This is a big concept. Circuit breaker cannot operate at 100% of the rating unless they, are, they call them 100% rating. And Joe, my friend, is start making since 100% rated circuit breakers only when you start hitting the 1,000 amps or higher. Again, you can get them up probably up to 600 amps, but it starts making sense when you're getting into the 1,000 amps and maybe higher than 600 amps and so forth because they're expensive. Okay. So we got that one. Um, single pole, single pole circuit breakers, guys. Um, single pole circuit breakers at one pole. You, you can get you 120. Two pole, obviously, can get you 240. Obviously, it's two, 240. Um, a two pole, you can dedicate them. 
So everybody knows what single pole. Single pole goes into a 120 circuit. Two pole goes into what? A 240 circuit. Three pole goes into a three-phase circuit. That's the basically the poles are. A good example is split wire receptacle. Split wire receptacle for the garbage disposal dishwasher. Remember how you guys see that split one circuit here, one circuit here. Both of them will land on um, on a, a 20 amp circuit line and with a neutral coming in here. That's a good application for a two pole circuit breaker. A two pole circuit breaker is designed to be two pole. It's not two single pole tied together. You guys are looking at two pole and three pole. You're not looking at two poles tied together. Cool. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, that we have single pole, we have two pole, and we have three pole. It's designed at three pole, single pole, two pole. Now, you can gang a single pole to make two pole or three pole. Everybody knows when we gang them together. So that ganging them, though, there's limitation on that. So with an approved handle, with a, a handle, with handle tie approved and listed, single circuit breaker can be ganged together to protect three uh, uh, other poles. So take this. Here's one. Here's two. Oops. And here's three. And there's a, a, a handle here. You guys have seen them gang together. This is three pole circuit breaker gang together. Now, here's my question for you. The question is, what type of loads can I feed out of this three circuit breakers gang together? Okay. Okay, so here's one type. I'm going to write type number one. Type number one, Chad, is single phase. So this is single phase 120, right? Single phase 120, no problem. Single phase 120. Um, another type, how about we can also feed from them from the same thing, three phase 208. A load three phase up to 208, not 480. 2-8. How about I can feed from here, Chad, single phase, 240, well, in this case, 240 or 208. Single phase, 240 or 208, like uh, air conditioning, right? Two poles. I can feed it from them. So these are basically your options to feed from this system. Can you guys see what the voltage is? We're, we're basically looking at 208 slash 120 and 240 slash 120 system. Now, do you see anything about 48277? You don't see anything about 48277. You don't see anything about 48277. The only time we use 48277 is, and we gang them, as if you have single phase, single phase, single phase, single phase, 277, 277, 277. Can you guys see that? That's the only time you can gang them together if they're feeding 277, like lights. Take these lights. If they were burning at 277, circuit 1, 2, 3, tied together with a, a, the approved handle and shared neutral. You cannot feed from this type at three phase 480 system. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? That's when the tide. Now, if, if they are molded like the one they uh, three pole circuit breaker, no problem. These are only if they are ganged with a the handle. There's restriction. If they are molded circuit breaker, one big circuit breaker, then you can feed any voltage up to 600 volts for the most part. The handle must be tied, so it means you can't get take a string from your wife's uh, sewing machine and go tie them together or, or uh, custom design the tie between them, right? When you just gang them, they have to be the, 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 the handle has to be a blue that goes right through them to gang these. Everybody knows when we say ganging, there is one, two, three, I can gang these together and make it a three gang or a, a three, it's not a three pole, but a flip. To, so when they're ganged together, they could, when they trip, one of them trip could take the rest with it. Most likely will, depending on the short circuit. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand that, especially the voltage limitation. So that's a big deal. Um, uh, we we talked about guys the maximum the interrupting rating. 
the interrupting rating of circuit breaker when we say 10,000 amp, 10,000 amp, this is how much safely a circuit breaker can interrupt short circuit or ground fault. Higher than this, big ball of fire. Cool? Okay, any questions? Any safely, I can't emphasize the word, safely de-energize. Because we can de-energize a lot of things unsafely. Right? We're going to safely de-energize. Any comments, any questions about circuit breakers? Any comments, any questions? Circuit breakers, I believe by code, guys, if um, if they are more than 5,000 kilo amp, they have to be labeled. Like, look at the ones in the front of you guys, the circuit breaker. They have to have a label on them. Fuses, fuses need a label. That was in the journeyman test. Fuses need a label, guys, only if the interrupting rating is more than 10,000. If, if you see no label on the fuse, it's rated for 10,000. If, if it's more than 10,000, they have to stamp a, a label on it. But the one that you guys are looking at, it's 2,000 amp and so forth. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? All right, let's talk about series rated and fully rated. Take this. Here's my fully rated and here's my series rated. Very simple, very easy. If you guys understand this one, why do we use series rated? Can I get the magic word? Mighty dollar. The series rated is always get you what? This costly. Can I have... Why, why would we even care about series rated? Cost. Cost. Cost is a big deal. Okay, I want you guys to wake up here. Here's a series rated panel. This, I'm sorry, this is a fully rated panel. Here's my fully rated panel. Very easy to understand. If you look at the short circuit here, I have a short circuit right at this point. Right at this point, and my short circuit is 20.8 thousand amp. Okay? 20.8 thousand amp. And right also to each one of these uh, fuses, each one of these fuses will also be at 20.8 thousand amp. It will, it, each one of these fuses will be able to see, have to see, will see at 20.8 thousand amp, 20.8 thousand amp. Okay, so um, so if this is a fully rated, a fully rated. Uh, do they have the rating on them? They don't have the rating on them. If it's a fully rated, I need you guys to size these for me as fully rated. Okay, 28, 28, fault to 28. Okay, if this is 28, what's, what would this have to be sized for? Can it be 20.8? 20 20, 20 Can it be? It has to be higher than 20.8. So the next standard is 22. So you don't have to understand, know that. So this is 22,000 M. Am I cool now if I have a 20.8 and my main is rated for 22? Am I safe? Yes. If you don't understand that one, kiss goodbye all the coordination I'm going to be doing in a couple of, 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 of system. I'm not kidding you. So if the short circuit right here is 20.8, the circuit breaker has to be bigger than that. Done. Now, this is the main. This is my main. Let's go to the sub-panels. This sub-panel, if it's fully rated, then each one of these, all of them, all of these have to be also 22 kilo amp rated. 22 kilo amp rated. That's called fully rated. Who cares? Very expensive panel. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? If the short circuit here is 28.8 and also down here is 28.8, then all these fuses have to be rated for 22 to handle that 20.8. Uh, 20 Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that? Cool. Where would you use something like this? Switch gears, switch boards, bigger equipment. Bigger equipment. Equipment that feed air handling units, chillers. That's where your fully, fully rated equipment becomes a big deal. Um, so don't think about a lighting panel and a receptacle panel as none of the places where you see fully rated. So can I have thumbs up, Chad? We see this one when we're feeding equipment, machines, switch gears, switch boards, 600 amp and higher. Okay? So that's typically, again, you can put them anywhere. So that's the fully rated. Look at the series rated. Series rated, the same situation, same panel. The series, the, uh, the short circuit right in here is 20.8 kilo amp. The short circuit also right in here is a 20.8 thousand amp. But look what happened. Now the fuse is rated for 22 kilo amp, this one, but the circuit breakers, all these circuit breakers are rated for 10,000 amp. Can you guys see the difference? 
instead of rating all these circuit breakers to 22, they rate them lower. Why? Why? Because it's cheap. Why are they allowed to do something like this? Because if it's series rated, guys, they in the factory, they coordinate between the fuse and the circuit breaker will be coordinated. This fuse and this circuit breaker will be coordinated by the manufacturer in the factory. So if there's a short circuit right here, take this. If there's a short circuit right here and the short circuit was nine kilo amp right here downstream, which one do you think is going to take care of that? The circuit breaker, the 10K. It's going to take care of that one because it's a big boy. 10,000 amp short circuit here. The circuit breaker will take care of it. Now take this. Now what happens if I have a short circuit here because of the impedance is lower and so forth? I came up with a 12,000 amp. Look at that, 12,000 amp. So this one will be taking care of this, but 12,000 amp, is it higher than the 10, 12? Yeah. Can the 10 handle it? No. So which one is going to handle it? The big boy. So the fuse will handle anything higher than what the circuit breaker downstream cannot handle. Now, I can't do that. Well, we can as engineers series rate them. These are done in the factory. They coordinate them together. They put them a label. They label the panel as series rate. Who cares? Cheaper equipment. Where would you use a system like this? All your receptacle panels, three phase and single phase. All your lighting panels, three phase and single phase are series rate. Lighting panels, receptacle panels, notoriously famous of being series rated. So you will find exactly like 22 here and 10, 22, 10. You are looking at a series rated panel right here, most likely. That will be 10 kilo amp here, and downstream will be 22. Any question guys about the series rated versus fully rated? And the most important thing is the dollars. The, the, the bottom line, why, who cares? The same panel can be rate, fully rated or series rated design. What's going to decide is what circuit breaker you put in that panel and it will decide how much money you're going to spend for this for this panel. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that. Okay, wait until you hear it again from my friends at Color Hammer when they come here. They'll go through the same example. You get it now, you can sleep when the Color Hammer comes here. Um, okay. So all these short circuit and all this mess that we're talking about, guys, fully rated and so forth, is coming from a short circuit. Short circuit rating. Short circuit rating start with the transformer. I'm going to take a very, very simple example, guys, because that's very important. And then I'll let you. So here's a transformer. Suppose this transformer was a 25 kilo amp, and the voltage is 240 slash 120, and the impedance, everybody knows what the impedance is? Right? The impedance, the resistance inside the, the transformer is 5%. Okay, so there you go. Excel, Brian from Excel designed a transformer to feed the apartment building that we have. This transformer came from the factory with 25 kilo amp and 24120 single phase, right? This is single phase. Let's do a single phase. And the impedance on it, stamped on it, says 5%. Here's my question for you. Now, I need to tie it to a panel, bring it to my panel. Here's my panel, right? And I decided what circuit breaker rating, short circuit rating, that this circuit breaker have to be, the minimum short circuit rating for this uh, uh, circuit breaker. Very easy, very simple. Grab your calculator and do this math for me. Um, I need to find the current. The current for single phase is 25K divided by uh, 240. I need a two gentlemen to give me the answer for this. 25K divided by 240. 104.16. K or? Uh, 104. 104. Did you multiply by K? By 1,000? I multiply by 25,000. 25,000. Okay. So 104. Okay. 104.16. Everybody agree now? Divide by 240. Sounds small. 2500. Zero, zero, zero divided by 240. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 24M. Thank you. I'm just thinking of a short circuit. 204, right? Okay. Now, the panel, 
the over temperature device for the panel goes up. What's the next standard from 104? 110. 110. Okay, so this circuit breaker is going to be 110 amp. Typically. Typically. There's another calculation we're going to do, but typically. Okay, so now I have the series of the circuit breaker. Let's do the short circuit then. Now, short circuit I, short circuit equal. You take the 104 divided by 5% impedance, which is 0 0.05. Can you guys divide 104 by uh, 0.05? 2,000. 82. And 83 amp. So this circuit breaker have to be rated for 2,000 to interrupt 2,000 amps or 2K. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me what? So this, if I put 2K here, 2 kilo amp, am I covered for this short circuit? Yes. Done. That's what typically you have in an apartment building, yes, or, or or a dwelling building. You're going to have a 10K circuit breaker, 100 or 110, fit from a transformer, 15, 20, 25, like this. So what we did, guys, we sized the circuit breaker, the main for this panel, and we sized the interrupting rating because the short circuit here is 2K, the smallest av available short circuit breaker that you can get for, for power is 10K. So I have 10K, I'm done. Everybody knows where the 10K came to be. I have to have something higher than two. The next standard available for this type of power system is, to, is uh, the 10. Is it wrong to put 22,000 amp here? It's not wrong, but guess what? Money. Money. It's like uh, when you size a brand circuit, you need number 12 and you put number four out. It's not wrong if you can um, terminate it. So that's basically what you're going to get for a short circuit calculation. That's what we did with the example in the book. Um, now, the last thing is, is you're going to hear the, the code book talk about um, a panel board and uh, load centers. Load centers. Panel, the NEC code book talks about all the panels are Article 408, I believe. Anybody can correct me on that one? Article 408. Talk about panel boards. All the panels that you have a main or no main, they're called panel boards. Now, the industry has multiple names for them, not just panel boards. You're going to have, you're going to have panel boards. You're going to have switch board. You're going to have switch gear. You're going to have load center. All these, the NEC code book, for the most part, treat them as 408 panel boards. I'm going to spare you the hassle of talking about switch gear, switchboard, and switch gear, because that's coming in the commercial industrial. These are the big standalone boxes that look like refrigerator, side by side, stand in the middle of a room, right? We'll talk about these one with the commercial project. When you're doing residential, your options are panel boards or load center. The only difference between them, guys, is load centers cheaper, smaller, size, physical size panels that's meant for residential and light commercial. You get them typically, I think you can get, of course, 100 amp. You get 200 amp. I think they can go even 300 amp, if I remember right. And you can get them most likely 240 volt, 120. And you can also get them 208 slash 120, three phase. See, that's the limitation, the limitation on the load centers. So if you're dealing with that's typically residential. Up to 200 amps, you can cover a lot of residential stuff, right? So you are dealing in a in real life, you're dealing with dwellings. And uh, look at the limitation of the voltage, 241.20. So, Darren, if you're dealing with 480.277, you don't even have an option as a load center. It's not an option. It's not on the table even. If you're dealing with 28.120, a small strip mall that you need to wire it, I think Square D have a load center of 28120, if I remember right, three phase. Cheaper, smaller, cheaper in the size, smaller, physically smaller. So that's basically the differences. Load centers, engineers wise, load center think dwellings only. You go commercial industrial, you think what? Panel boards. Bigger panels, more gutters, more gutters to pull your wires through them. Um, for the same 100 amp panel, the same 100 amp panel, if it's a uh, load center, it would be this size. That's load center. If it's um, 
If it's a panel, it would be this size. This is panel board. And I'm exaggerating a little bit here. Um, so it'll be bigger, deeper, bigger, more gutters to pull the conductors. Makes sense because we're pulling more, more circuit for commercial industrial. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, that this is what we're going to do? You're going to hear my friend um, Todd Christensen from Cutler and Hammer when he comes in a couple of uh, months here um, talk about exactly the same thing. He goes also deeper into the switch gear switchboards, so I'm not going to bug you here with that one, especially at this time. Okay, the last co concept that we have here, yep, the last concept is selective coordination. You're going to hear, hear selective coordination and non-selective coordination. This is very simple. I have an overcome friction device, a 1,000 amp, and right underneath it, I have a 100 amp, um, and right underneath this 100 amp, I have a 20 amp, and right to the 20 amp, I have a light. Cool. So these are, here's my main panel, here's my second panel, um, here's my third panel. Can you guys see that? I have main panel, 1000 amp, feeding a 100 amp panel, um, feeding, let's put, uh, yeah, 1000 amp, yep, feeding another panel here, which is a 1000 amp panel here, and feeding a 100 amp panel down here, that feeds 20 amp lighting circuit. Here's what, uh, what selective coordination is. What happens if I have short circuits right in here? So who am I going to pick on? Um, Brian, my friend, went to grab the phase A and phase B and or phase A and tie it directly to the frame of this fixture. It's a ground fault or short circuit. Which circuit breaker do you want to trip first? The 20 amp, the 100 amp, or the 1000 amp? Now, what happened if you are in charge of this project and the 1,000 amp trip? That's called a bad day. <laughs> Very bad day. And it did happen in the past. So that's what the selective coordination is. Required for all hospitals. Hospitals required, guys. Emergency system require coordination by code. You have to coordinate them. 99.9% um, .9 of the commercial projects and industrial project engineered ones are required to have coordination by engineers, not by code, but you require them in all the hospitals and all emergency systems. If you have an emergency system, do you require standby system require them? Um, uh, a building like Dunwoody is not required by code, but if it's an engineered system, it has to be, otherwise we'll have a bad day. Okay, so that's what's fully coordinated. Short circuit here, this boy will handle it. If this, for whatever reason, cannot handle it, guess who's gonna take care of it? The 100 amp, the line, first line of defense, second line of defense, third line of defense in terms of short circuit. But which one do you want it to trip first? Coordinated system here. If it's not selectively coordinated, then the, the main is going to trip. So every time um, um, Andrew, my friend, screw up something here in that light, the main is done with a 3000 amp switch gear going to trip. Is that a nightmare? Do you guys see a nightmare here or do you see a nightmare? That's why it's selective coordination that you, Adam, my friend, with your help, with the help of your friend Chad, will be doing starting next project. We're going to put all these systems in a panel in a, in a uh, SKM. We have an SKM software. We're going to build all these panels inside the SKM software, and we're going to do the coordination for them. So we don't end up with a uh, 120, 20 amp circuit tripping the switch gear. That's, let's say, 28 slash 120. Uh, switch gear, three phase for three phase switch gear here. Yeah, you're not very popular with you. They're not popular at all. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll start talking about um, it did happen in hospitals. It happens in a lot of places, especially with the ground fault. The ground faults are not. Co we'll talk about ground fault later, guys. In a system higher than a thousand amp, you are required to have a ground fault because the ground fault becomes um, the circuit breaker becomes so big that it cannot see a ground fault. It just doesn't see it. Um, it sits there and burn without being seen. So what they do is they add another protection called ground fault protection that looks just at the ground fault. It's only required on system 480, 277, and 1,000 amp or higher. So if you haven't done 1,000 amp or higher, you've never heard of it. So that's basically your selective coordination. Your selective coordination. Any comments, guys, before I flash a couple of other pictures for you here? 
Um, any comments, any questions, selective coordination, more to come. If you guys read this chapter and get it, you're good, uh, you're ahead of me as we move forward. Uh, we talked about the fuse, guys, the S5 fuse. This is your S, so you don't tamper with the fuse and you don't put 20 where 15 is located. Um, not a whole lot of application for them. So these are different type of fuses. Um, we talked about this one, and you guys are looking at this is um, um, this is a 240. It's flip 240. Can you guys see the 2000 AM interrupting rating here? And dual element time delay fuse. You guys are we're looking at one in a second here. That's uh, here's the elements inside it that breaks. These are what what happens to the fuse, guys. You heat all these and it breaks. It interrupts the circuit. And they have, uh, if you, I don't know if you shook this one, there's some material like sand type material where there's, there will be a fire here, um, an arc, but it extinguished the arc so fast. It has to. One engineer, one describe it for me, guys. You know what a short circuit, when you have a short circuit condition is, you know, on a, like a bigger system, just imagine for a second, you have a semi, big semi going down 94, highway 94 at 100 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? 100 miles an hour, right down the, uh, the Highway 94, and all of a sudden it hit a brick wall. That's what, imagine the energy that's going to be dissipated. That's what a short circuit is. When you have a 3,000 amp system like Dunwoody, and you have a short circuit at the 3,000 amp, that's exactly like a semi, running at 100 miles an hour down 94, and all of a sudden it hits a brick wall. Can you see what's going to happen? The smoke and uh, that's what happened inside this fuse <laughs> or circuit breaker. That's what the circuit breaker is going to handle. This is exact, almost the same energy. You have to interrupt this energy. So it's a big deal. When you see things blowing up, that's a big deal for us. Not personally, no. No. Thanks, God. So these are your different type of fuses that you can get. Um, let me, I just want to go directly into his circuit breaker. Can you guys see that 10,000, 120, tells you the voltage that's rated for, for circuit breaker is two pole. We talked about series coordination, um, just as fuses that can fit with. Um, this is the classification of fuses, guys. Class H uh, cartridge fuses, uh, class R. Cartridge fuses. Look at the R. Here's my favorite. You can hear a lot of RK. Can you guys see RK? Can you see the differences? R can go where? Up to what? 2000. The more short circuit that thing can handle, the more superior the equipment is and the more expensive. Can you guys see that 10,000 uh, versus these guys are sitting at 10 instead of 10,000? These can get um, from 50 all the way, RK all the way to 2000. You don't have to know all this one at this time. This is just comparing, guys, different circuit breakers. You can have main fuse and main fuse breakers. Everybody knows that for panels, you can have a fuse panel, disconnect fuses, or you can have circuit breakers. Typically, circuit breakers are coming at a lower amps. Uh, or you can have a fuse that protects the panel that has circuit breaker. So this is what they're telling you. I have a main fuse and, um, uh, and main branches, main... Um, a fuse branches, series rated, and this is main, a breaker main, breaker branches, breaker main, breaker branches, series, and fully rated. And it goes through all these requirements for it, guys. Um, we went through all this one, guys, series rated. The only thing I want to uh, I want to tell you, if your equipment is series rated, then it has to have by code, it has to have the this marking on the panel that says caution, series combination system rated, um, say 100 amp or whatever, uh, 10,000, 100 amp, uh, uh, amp identified uh, replacement components required. So right at the panel, because if you change the circuit breaker not with a different type, you just have screwed up the series rating of the panel. So series combination system rated, see, uh, uh, I think this is the rating for the interrupting rating, 1,000 amp or so. So that's your um, equipment here. Oops. Uh, we talked about the, that thing. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Uh, let me go here and stop at this point here.
The only thing I want to mention when series rated, they have to have a label that says series rated and the type of circuit breakers and the rating of the system is it 22 or 22K or 10K, very important series rated. Fully rated, no problem because they're fully rated. Guys, this chapter, if you really understand it fully, you are a step ahead of us in the commercial because that's we're going to do the same thing in the commercial with a focus on the commercial buildings. Go. Any comments, any questions? Did they put you to sleep? One of you? <laughs>